the right wing, like I said, is going crazy. MAGA has realized that they've been had. So we have Bob, Bob Poole going crazy. Bob Good going crazy. Check out what he had to say, then we'll take it on the other side. Is the Virginia Republican Congressman Bob Good? He serves on the Budget Committee, also a member of the Howdom, uh, House Freedom Caucus. We know your colleagues from the Freedom Caucus, uh, Congressman Good, are speaking right now. They say they are no votes. You call this deal an abysmal failure. Does that mean that you are a no vote as well? Absolutely not. The bottom line: this bill is bad for the country. It worsens our fiscal situation. It makes an eventual default much more likely. It'll increase our national debt by some 10 percent over two years. It's an unlimited increase to the national debt limit. Uh, it'll go to 35, 36 trillion dollars on our current track. That's with no new extra special in, uh, uh, kind of spending, emergency type spending. It is still will take us to 35, 36 trillion in national debt. Democrats got everything they wanted in this bill, which was essentially an un unconditional debt ceiling increase with no changes to their primary program. To me. It means re Republicans are going to go on record, apparently some Republicans, in voting for for to affirm the Biden agenda for two more years. It's just terrible for the American people, terrible for the country, terrible for the Republican Party. Congressman, good to be clear. Speaker McCarthy says that there is nothing in here for Democrats, but I want to ask you specifically about what we're going to be watching happen first, right? The Rules Committee has to have, uh, it's, it has to weigh in on this today. So do you expect it to pass through the Rules Committee? Chip Roy, your colleague, has said, we can still kill this and start over and do the right thing. Well, Democrats are being told to suppress their enthusiasm for the bill behind the scenes. They don't want it to look too much, to be too evident it's a Democrat bill. So they're suppressing their enthusiasm and feigning some concern. But it's essentially a Democrat bill with everything that they wanted, which is a debt ceiling increase with no conditions, essentially. I hope that Chip Roy, Ralph Norman, and Thomas Massey, the new conservatives uh, who were put on the Rules Committee, will be able to kill it in the Rules Committee. But I certainly hope Republican opposition to it will grow as more Republican members learn what's actually in the bill. You know, you go from, you know, from uh, canceling the IRS expansion of $80 billion to just rescinding $1 billion of it. You go to really weak work requirements. Well, let me ask the, you about uh, that because you say they're really weak work requirements, but they are expanded work requirements. So how, why would Democrats be well, voting to expand very the work requirements in any way? In, in Limit Save Grow, you had work requirements for Medicaid, food stamps, and cash welfare payments, as you know. The biggest part of that is Medicaid. That was taken out. And then you had some exceptions added to the to the work requirements for veterans, for homeless, for anyone affiliated with foster care. Those are actually permanent. And the modest work requirements only that phased into age 54, those have a sunset provision to them. So those will expire, but the exceptions will not expire. So even the work requirements aren't good. It's again, like the IRS expansion. Not good, but you agree vote. they're still stricter than they currently are. Let me ask you about the Freedom Caucus, if I can, that had a conference call last night where Ken Buck, another Freedom Caucus colleague, floated a motion to vacate. That's the rule for those watching that would allow a single Republican to initiate a vote to remove Kevin McCarthy as Speaker. Buck, as we understand it, referred to it as the elephant in the room. Where are those discussions? Well, the, the Freedom Caucus is focused on trying to defeat the bill, trying to defeat a bill that's bad for the country, trying to expose what's in the bill. But I will tell you that what January was about, to speak for battle, what it was about was uh, was uh, us not doing in a Republican majority what we've always done, which is passing bills, uh, major pieces of spending legislation with a majority of Democrat voters. I, I suspect that you're going to have more Democrats vote for this bill than Republicans when it's all said and done tomorrow night. That was one of the things. We're not going to do that in a majority. We're not going to pass legislation with the majority of Democrat votes for major spending packages. Number two, we're going to use every tool at our disposal to fight all the leverage that we had. We were in a strong position just a few days ago. We have surrendered all so of that. And on the at the 11th hour, we have uh, jettisoned everything about the Limit, Save, Grow Act. And we've given the Democrats what they started out asking back in January, which was an unconditional, unlimited debt ceiling increase through January of 25. So let me be quick on that, if I can. Would you support Congressman Gosar's suggestion that it can be used as a threat to force McCarthy to allow Republicans to amend the bill on the House floor that could stall its package? This, it's I don't know what you're talking about, a threat, but we ought to have amendments that are able to be made. Uh, we ought to have op an open rule process. We ought to have regular order. That was part of January as well. Should Speaker McCarthy remain Speaker, I guess, is the simple question, yes or no? 
Well, again, th this this was a this is a terrible failure of leadership. And so uh, he's the leader. Should he to remain not, speaker? To not utilize every tool at our disposal to fight and use the Republican majority that the American people gave us. We ought to be able to force a Republican bill to the floor, not a Democrat bill to the floor. We also ought to uh, not be passing legislation with the majority of Democrats, which I think is what's going to take place on the vote tomorrow night. Congressman Good, help me understand this. Republicans raised the debt ceiling, suspended it officially three times under the former president, Donald Trump. The national debt rose almost $8 trillion. I think it's $7.8 trillion to be exact during former President Trump's time in office. Why is this different? Well, first of all, I'm in Congress because I wasn't part of that, and I brought came to Congress to make change. Number two, most Republicans didn't vote for that debt ceiling increase. That was Democrat votes that largely provided those debt ceiling increases. Very few Republicans who are in the House today have ever voted for a debt ceiling increase. However, we spent 90 days coming together negotiating a, a responsible, reasonable debt ceiling increase of $1.5 trillion because the, the, the Senate and the White House were MIA. We were doing all the work on the House side, and you had Republicans who wanted to cut spending spending so much they would never have to increase the debt limit, but we agreed to do it with some responsible reforms, some significant cuts in spending. Uh, we did our work. It was a meaningful bill. It was, it was a bill that was good for the country. It's a step in the right direction. We should have forced the Senate to vote on our bill. We should have forced the Senate to vote on our bill. You know, um, if I didn't care about human beings, if progressives didn't care about human beings, they wouldn't make comments like, those of us who need to vote for this bill to make it pass, not because we like it, but because we care about those who would be hurt if we get a, if we get a, def, a, a default, right? Thinking people, people who are willing to put humanity ahead of this macho testosterone winning kind of a thing, right? It's amazing. Kudos to you, guy. Kudos to you for being so evil, brother. This guy, good. These guys, uh, the, the worst part about their evil, right, is that they can do it with a straight face. But the second worst part is that there are people who listen to what he had to say and think it has some sort of a plausibility. It's a shame. It's a shame that somebody can be that evil not to understand that the bill that they passed would have left people hungry, that the bills that they passed the way it was passed would have thrown us into a cataclysmic recession because, because of where we are in this recovery. But they don't care. They don't care. They only talk about life as a prop. But when it comes to do the things to maintain life and the quality of life, they are nowhere to be found. Let's remember that, people.